Do you want a great lighting setup without spending hundreds on fancy gear? Or are you looking for something smarter that stays consistent, but pre-made solutions are too expensive or too limited? So, I did something and you can do it too. It just takes a few bucks and a little bit of DIYing. Hi, welcome to Made by Jade. I'm still building my desk setup and it needs to do a lot. It's my workstation where I work most of the days for my day job, my creative space to work on projects and arts, and my filming and editing space. I'm always looking for things to add, things to remove, things to modify, and recently I realized the lighting wasn't cutting it, especially for filming. I was using my regular smart bulbs from Philips Wiz that I use every day with their own automations. Every time I wanted to film, I would manually tweak the colors or brightness to more or less look decent on camera, then reset everything to everyday use. And their positioning is great for my regular work and the dynamic of home office, not so much for filming. I wanted a dedicated key light, one that would illuminate my face whenever I make videos like this, that is smart and can be automated and doesn't cost 100 to 300 euros, like the super cool Elgato Newer or Godox lights. But with just a small RGB LED strip with individually addressable LEDs, that's important, an ESP32, I got an RGB studio light that I can control and automate in Home Assistant. Plus the USB cable and the power supply, but you get the idea. Here's how I made it. The design is highly inspired by the Elgato key light, minimal, slim and clean. I modeled the shell on Onshape, basically trying to replicate the vibe of those cool super slim lights, so it doesn't take much space adjusted for the bed size of my 3D printer. My original plan was to use a quarter inch threaded insert so I could mount it into a tripod or a magic arm. But at the time I didn't have any inserts on hand. So I made an adapter system instead. This adapter slides into a slot in the frame and is secured by the back panel. It could initially have a quarter inch hole to fit the tripod and use as is and in the future it can be swapped with one with a threaded insert. After designing it, I got other ideas for different adapters to mount into other things or mount other things into it. Who knows? The only downside is that I have to unscrew the back panel to change the adapter, but that's what makes it more secure. Getting the fit just right took a few test prints. I needed to be secure, but not so secure that I couldn't remove it. I ended up scaling it down to 97.5% in the slicer. This tweak is already applied in the published model, which you can find in Maker World, link in the description. For the diffuser, I could have printed it super thin in a white filament, but recently my TV broke. I don't know what happened. It might have been iCAD, I don't know, I'm not blaming anybody. And I decided to repurpose the parts that I could. And this was a perfect opportunity to use the LED diffuser of the TV. I printed a template for the diffuser, super thin, just four layers was enough. Traced the shape on the diffuser and cut it. It was incredibly hard to cut the thicker layer by hand. I used an Exato knife. Probably not the best thing, but any other method it would just break. Well, a few hours later I got a diffuser. As for the LEDs, the only addressable ones that I had lying around were some WS2812B. In the future, I might upgrade these LEDs for better ones, with an independent white LED to give me a better white, like the SK6812. But for now and for this experiment, these were more than fine. For the brains or brain, tiny brain, of these key light, I use an ESP32 C3 Super Mini, this cute baby, it's USB-C, and I flash the WLED firmware into it. To do that, just go to the WLED website from your browser, I had to use Chrome. Plug the ESP32 to your computer, select the device and load the WLED firmware. 
you can configure your Wi-Fi settings right away or connect your phone to the Wi-Fi of DSP32 and configure them later. Then, in the WLED app, search New Device and Add. In the configuration, select the GPIO pin that you will connect the beginning of the LED strip. And very important, if you're not using an external power supply and are powering the LEDs directly from the ESP32, you should limit the current to under 500 milliamps. These tiny boards cannot handle a lot of current. Be careful with that. But since I wanted to see how bright this assembly could be, I used an external power supply. I connected the 5 volts input directly to the V-in pin on the ESP32 and to the LED strip. I just stripped an old USB cable to do that, but in the future I'm thinking of getting some USB-C sockets and then just use a regular USB-C cable to power it. It will be a lot more convenient to be able to remove the cable when I want to move it. Back to the setup of the WLED, Home Assistant integration is super easy. Just add the new integration, WLED, and your light should appear right there. From here you can control it and add it to your automations or scenes as you like. And that's it. Overall, it was a fun and simple project. Some issues here and there, but I'm still happy with it. However, I'm already thinking about a second version of it. Something to better hide the LED dots and improve the design overall. I'll update you when I get there. How much did this project cost me? And was it worth it? For the components, I used 41 LEDs of the roll, equivalent to 73 centimeters that costs around 4 euros. The ESP32 C3 I got for 2 euros and 45 cents. The printed parts were about 200 grams of PLA, around 3.5 euros. The cable, I used an old one, but for a new one, 2 euros. For the power supply, I'm also using an old one, but I think I could get one for 5 euros, a budget one. In total, 17 heroes, and compare that to 100 to 300 heroes, that sounds pretty good. And I got to design, build, thinker, and customize it myself. It was fun. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if that's something you would like to build to complement your setup. If you want to replicate the design, feel free to do so. The model is available in Maker World. You can find the link in the description. If you have any ideas how to improve this thing or if you built something recently that you're super proud of, I would love to know. And if you like this video, you probably would like to see other 3D prints that I use every day to complement my setup. If so, just click the next video and until next time, bye!